Hey guys, so today we're going to be focusing on creation kit compatibility patches, how to make them very, very easy. Now, I kind of want to preface that I have creation kit fixes. My creation kit is in dark mode. All right, so let's get started. We're going to launch Mod Organizer. If you don't use Mod Organizer, you can just launch the creation kit from your desktop or from the Bethesda launcher. So we're gonna be running this right now. First, I'm gonna show you how to make a new patch. So you launch the creation kit and you hit save. So it will lead you to your Skyrim SE data folder. Now, if you use Mod Organizer, you will know that if you actually physically go into this folder, it will not be there. That's because it saves this specific patch into the MO2 overwrite folder. You don't really have to worry about that right now. What you have to worry about is just naming the mod. So for example, I'll name it gaze test patch. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and save that. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be loading Skyrim and everything naturally. All of these DLCs and whatnot. Then we're going to be finding the patch just to show you guys, it's the active file. So this is where our changes are going to save to. Now, I don't really want to be editing this patch because I have a pre-existing patch. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to look for Day's Rorikstead patch because I have to edit something in Rorikstead. Okay, as you can tell, I've been fucking busy. Day's Rorikstead patch. Now, double click, set as the active file. Whichever patch mod whatever is your active file that is what it will save into as you can see these are the master files to my patch so these master files are required in order for my patch to work now i have to edit uh 3d i believe it's 3d trees 3d landscapes one of them that adds these snowberries that are kind of pissing me the fuck off right now so you want to load whichever mod you're going to be editing. If you don't know which thing your mod comes from, you're going to have to probably click on it with more informative console. If that doesn't work, which it hopefully should, you got to figure out what mod is causing the problem or causing the incompatibility if you will so we have 3d landscapes now we're looking for s3d trees which i'm probably past okay I didn't great so this really should be the crux of what i need to edit today in this patch okay so we're gonna hit all right it's gonna load in everything so it takes a second obviously it takes a long time to load every single thing in the game so if you're going to an interior cell, you're going to want to go under interiors. Let's say you got a fucking problem with, I don't know, a floating lantern in fucking Volsky. Then you're going to double click this and it's going to load that cell. For the sake of everything right now, <laughs> exterior cells, we're going to be heading to Tamriel. Now, if you're editing Windhelm, there's a specific world for Windhelm. Same with Whiterun. You can see all of this here. Sovngarde, Skaldafin, Riften, Labyrinthian, Markarth World. Usually the main cities have their worlds and the DLCs have their own separate area here, okay? So if you're trying to edit, let's say, you know, Rorikstead, a smaller village, a smaller place, Shorestone, that's all gonna be in Tamriel, all right? So we're gonna boot up Tamriel we're going to then find Rorikstead. You can click this and hit R if that helps. Uh, so as you can tell, the little stars mean that we have edited in these areas before. So we're going to double press that. Double press, by the way. And uh, this is gonna be our object window. This is mainly if we're adding stuff in the creation kit. Incompatibility patches, we don't add because we want everything to be an ESL. I will make this bigger for the sake of the video, sure. Okay, so as you can tell, we're in Rorik said now. So there were these snowberries. Uh, by the way, I should be clear that I'm moving around with shift 
and the scroll wheel. So you can hear me holding shift and then I'm using my mouse scroll wheel to scroll around like a maniac, right? Okay, so see these snowberries were pissing me off, right? So you don't want to ever directly delete something from another mod. If you're adding something to your own mod, you can go ahead and delete that with no problem. However, if you're editing a pre-existing mod, doing a compatibility patch, you never ever want to delete it because that can cause serious harm, serious problems, okay? So instead you double click it and you hit initially disabled. Now initially disabling the object renders it completely invisible in game. If it bothers you, if it's in your field of view, you can just pretty much send it upstairs. You can go negative 3000, sends it in the sky somewhere. We hit D on the keyboard to deselect things. Now, if you're ever locked onto an item in the creation kit, you can't really move the camera. So you hit D, deselect, and then you hold shift, and then you alter your mouse perception. Very, very simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit D, make sure we're deselected, and we're going to grab this annoying little fucker and we're gonna initially disable it. I don't really feel the need to make it disappear entirely by going negative 3000, I just wanna disable it, right? And that's literally it. Then you just hit save on the patch and uh, it's pretty much done. Now, if you have floating trees or you know everything, I've already patched this place uh, for the most part, I'm sure eventually down the line I will find something like the snowberries, but now they're disabled. So let's say that you see that this tree kind of is sticking out a little bit. You're gonna grab it and you're gonna hit Z on your keyboard with left mouse click and you're gonna drag it under a little bit, right? And then you hold control Z to undo that. So it's pretty basic, pretty straightforward. If you have intersecting trees, you know, you could argue this tree is a little bit close to the other one. Sure, we can just go ahead and perhaps move this one and then deselect, right? And then kind of just move around. And uh, this means that the mod is inside of a BSA folder. MO2 can easily extract the BSA for you, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's just, you need to make sure that the setting is checked off with that. So as you can see, I've pretty much done everything. I don't need to unpack whatever mod that is. It's irrelevant because that's, that wasn't the cause of my problems in Rorikstead. So yeah, you can tell my LOD is kind of weird as well because LODs actually do show up in the creation kit from Dindalod. I did actually want to move this tree though because I did see this earlier and it was intersecting with that and I thought it looked kind of fucking weird. So I will probably just move this over a tad. I kind of would like it to look a little natural, kind of like right next to the building but not really inside of the building I feel like that looks very stupid that's a super tall tree as well oh this you could tell I negative 3,000 this tree because <laughs> it's just kind of in the sky so yeah but it is initially disabled which means that it will not show up in your actual game so now we're gonna exit that was pretty much it it's very very easy very straightforward literally anybody can do this now I want to show you guys how to get the patch, how to find your patch that you just made. All right, so what you wanna do, Creation Kit also does a not responding kind of shit a lot, it's normal. So now you're going to see this here in the right pane of your mod organizer. Now you can open Origin and Explorer and that's gonna take you right to where it is, all right? My overwrite folder is MO2 Skyrim Mods Overwrite, and it's going to be in here. Right. I copy it. I paste it to my desktop. I add to archive. Day's test patch. All right, now I'm going to remove it from here. I'm also going to remove that from here as well. Unnecessary. And then we're going to exit. And this is now on our desktop. So we are going to then install this through Mo2. Install new mod from archive, all right? So you're gonna hit this and you're gonna find the mod and you're gonna install it from the archive. Now that's kind of just, if you want it to be over here 
and if you want to delete it from your archive folder, this isn't something that you have to do per se. I personally do it this way because I, I don't know, I don't really like to have my patches just only as ESPs in this side. I kind of like to have them all organized over here, right? So as you can see, they're all neatly organized here and they're also in my ESP section. If you just don't, if you don't add the archive, it's only gonna be in your plugin section and it's just easier for the sake of everything to do it this way. Add it to your archive, hit install from file, do that and that's pretty much it. Very, very easy, very simple. Thank you guys so much for watching my creation kit compatibility patch tutorial. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope that you guys have a lovely evening and take care.